Welcome to the Yoke Sheep podcast. I got the squad with me. To my left, my lovely wife of 14.8 years, Alicia Staten. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. Great. Grand. <laughs> are you good? I'm a little wiped out from the workout this morning, but no, we did good. We're doing good. All right. And then to our right is the younger millennial Alicia Dan 2.0, better version of us, Audrey and Jens from Utah. What's up, guys? What's up? What's up? What's up? Thank you. Welcome to Spokane. Thanks for coming up. Oh, it's beautiful here. Is it, though? Yeah, it is. Okay. We have trees. <laughs> I mean, Utah's really pretty, too. It but is. <laughs> Utah's got more of that desert vibe. Yeah. But In parts. Yeah. I like Utah a lot. I yeah. think um, it's probably my favorite state to visit especially southern Utah. Yeah, it's so pretty. We were just at the Grand Canyon as a family, and we were like, man, we should have just gone back to Zion and Bryce and yeah. Saint, I love St. George area. You gotta come to Lake Powell. I haven't been there yet. Yeah. Yeah, it's diverse. I mean, you can get a little bit of everything. You got the mountains up north. I mean, everywhere. And then you got the desert down south and Lake Powell. Like, you got a little bit of everything. We're missing the ocean. Yeah. Other than that, it's a place yeah. to be. Okay, so how old were you guys when you met? Give us the backstory of how you met. Let's get into it. You start. <laughs> so I was finishing up uh, at Utah State University. I was playing football there, and I was. it was before my senior season, and I was 23 at the time. Mm-hmm. So, so I had served a mission for two years when I was 18. Mormon. So, Mormon. <laughs> <laughs> so I was... I was wasn't just a late, you know, I wasn't a doctor going to school, but I was, you know, a missionary. That's re- missionary. very respectful. So. <laughs> <laughs> so you literally pause college to do the Lord's work and then come back. So mm-hmm. that's why you're 23 as a senior. Right. Mm-hmm. And you're playing, co- what position are you playing? I was playing cornerback. Yep. So, so you're fast. <laughs> I mean, He's I, fast. I was He's fast. fast. I had to dodge those big guys. There's a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Utah State. Yeah, Utah, yeah, State, Utah State University. Utah State yep. University. Did you know that guy who... Uh, no, he's younger than you. He works for, he's the guy that came over to the place to help us demo a little bit. He helps out the Rockman oh. games. He's from your neck of the woods, and he played at Utah State. Hmm. Uh, but he got shut down, football got shut down during COVID, and so he never came back. Oh, He's a big dude. I forgot, I'm forgetting his name. He's going to kill me because he probably listened to this. But anyways, <laughs> he played at Utah State. <laughs> okay. Um, Really big dude. He played defensive end. Hmm. Um, and then he helps out with the Rockman games, which is like attack mm-hmm. in southern Idaho. Have mm-hmm. you guys heard of Rockman games? Mm-mm. Yeah. It's a pretty cool event. They give away, they have like a million dollar giveaway. Oh, dang. What? Google. Oh I'm not, God, it's archery. I'm not even kidding. Yeah, Google. Sick. Okay. I digress. I interrupt. So, okay. So you're a senior. So, yeah. yeah so so it was 20, I was 2016, and I had met, well, I had seen Audrey. <laughs> at another <laughs> event, I was we were at what some skating place, yeah. And I was I'd on seen a date her on a date, with right? someone else, <laughs> and <laughs> thinking she was cute. And then I saw a few pictures where it was on Instagram and she was tagged, right? And I was like, I think this is the girl I saw, she's super cute, it says she goes to Utah State. So I'm like, all right, what do I got to lose, right? It's like the new era of dating and. I slid into her DMs, to <laughs> say the least. Slid right in there. <laughs> so, like, that's 2016 Instagram? Yeah. I, was Did it, it 2015? A, it might be 2015. Did it have, like, a spam filter back then? You know, like, did hit, or did, you just get every message? <laughs> no spams. You just get them all, I think. And so you probably get a lot of guys like, hey, you got to get a picture of your foot. And then you got <laughs> this guy who's like, hey, you like adventure? Yeah. <laughs> exact line. <laughs> it got her attention, I guess. I don't know. But yeah. So I was you replied. Young. I was like, I was 18. So when I met him, well done. fresh out of high school, like super young. And at first, he's 23, right? So I was kind of like, this seems a little suspicious. Like, I feel like he should have a girlfriend or be dating someone or I don't know, maybe something's wrong with him. <laughs> <laughs> 23. I'm like, what's so wrong with this guy? Because he seems so great. I'm well, like, Utah, that's, I don't know. that's like, 
for some reason, everybody feels like they need to get married right out of high school. Yeah, and it's so, it's really common. Yeah. So you know, a little sass over here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's just fast forward to Audrey. When did you know that? Oh, this dude's legit. Shoot, this is actually funny because it kind of has to do with hunting. So my dad took me on a hunt in Texas where yep. I killed a whitetail, some hogs with my dad and uncles. And my dad at the end of the trip, because I was kind of like talking to gents, but you know, I wasn't sure yet. I was young. I wasn't planning on getting married. I just started college. And my dad's like, okay, you have been talking about gents this whole hunt. The whole time I was like, gents would love this. We need to get Jens here. He should be here with us hunting. Like, so kind of by the end of that, I was like, shoot, like, I think I got to marry this guy. So came back and... But she didn't say that. No. no. Oh, I did not no say hints. it for a while. <laughs> I was like, yeah. playing it low key. Yeah. But you don't know, you can tell well, me had, I, So she had another missionary out on a mission. Uh -huh. And they're high school sweet, sweethearts. Oh, this sheesh, was like, don't bring that up. I was saying, <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my God. Time out. Dude serving the Lord and gents swept in. Is that what oh I'm hearing? <laughs> gents like, I got the Lord's work to do myself. <laughs> Is that what I'm hearing? And on top care. of that, she wanted to go on a mission. So I told her, well, what do you want to do that for? Yeah. Okay, and yeah, that's actually a big part of this. So like you said, we are LDS, uh -huh. you know. So I got a mission call. So I had that the whole time we were dating. So I was supposed to leave yep. in May for a year and a half to go serve the Lord, you know? Yeah. But I'm dating him, and I'm like, it's all right, I'll keep him around. So anyway, that's why my dad's like, let's go on this hunt, spend some good time together before oh, okay. you leave. That yeah, makes sense. so that's a big part, I left that out. But anyways, yeah, I didn't go. I was like, yeah, I'm not going. Yeah. Let's cancel that, and let's get married, so. Yeah, so when she decided that, I was like, okay, well, do you wanna, you know, in my head, I was like, well, let's just, keep dating let's figure this make sure we're good and she's like well if i'm staying home like i'm ready to do this like i re received my answer basically yeah. and i was like okay i feel good about this and so we dated for three months and got married three months later oh like six months. we just got our we just got beat yeah i yeah. thought we were, i thought we did pretty good Dang. six months three months engaged Three month. Yeah. Like, was, so you guys been married for eight years. Eight years. Eight years. Eight years. Coming up. Boy and a girl. Mm hmm Two kids. One still in diapers. You one's in diapers. And one's out. Yeah. Four. Mm hmm Right. Okay. Yep. Boy and boys the oldest. Mm -hmm. No, no, boys youngest. What's the daughter's name? Sorel. Sorel. Mm hmm How weak does she make gents? How <laughs> oh my gooey. gosh. She owns him. She Let's owns be you. real. My oldest daughter him. owns me. That's a fact. Yeah. Uh, Alicia, <laughs> give them the quick Cliff Notes version how we met and that we got beat by their record of three and three. I'm impressed. Yeah, yeah. shoot. Dang. So I just am realizing we're like a solid decade older than them. We're, so we're Gen just X. 10. 10 years prior to them. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't Instagram quite yet. No. So no sliding in the There was like MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> no sliding in. There might have been Facebook. There Facebook. was Facebook. There was Facebook. I know there was uh, Match.com. Uh, oh. <laughs> I might have had a how profile. Do you know? I was like, how do you know? I might have had a profile, and Dan might have made me show him my profile, and it happened to say that I loved being at the St. Joe, so I think <laughs> that's, that's when he decided that, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. that he wanted to marry me. But um, So out of all the mountain ranges in the area, her favorite place to go spend summer is on this, like my mountains. Yeah. You're like, yeah, okay. Like, oh, shoot. shoot. Yep. That's cool. That's what else you got? <laughs> <laughs> so we were at Oz Fitness. You were a trainer there. I had just quit working as a trainer, like, probably two months prior. And you walk in like you own the place. And I'm like, who is this guy? He acts like he owns this gym. I've never seen him in here before. Yeah. I've been working here. And um, then he comes up to my mom while she's on a stair mill and asks, who, is that your daughter? And who's that guy she's with? Is that her boyfriend? Because it looks like her dad. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> she's like, oh, yeah, I don't like him. Like, you should go talk to her. I don't that's like my mom. mom. That's green, my mom. Green lit me. <laughs> yeah. Because I was, I could read her vibe. I was like, that's not her boyfriend, right? And she's like, and I was like, you're kidding. <laughs> and I don't You're know who kidding. the guy, I can't remember the guy's name, but like, 
seriously, I thought he was way older than he was. Like he just looked to be, and I was yeah. like, dude, he's not. Like, Get she's her away from Grandpa. I, just tell, <laughs> I was like, there's just no way. But and then when the mom gave me that little yeah. like. I don't like, I don't approve. I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> I'm in, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> but, you know, me being the very, like, naive young person I was, I was like, <laughs> you approached me kind of in a business mindset. Yeah. Mm. Telling me about, you know, your business that you were going to open. And, and I got really excited about that. So we went on an interview to Starbucks. And uh, I got to help you, you know, start your new gym and then, I don't know, one way or another, we kind of realized we were dating and never became official. <laughs> kind of realized it. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of awkward. So like I had a business partner and we had decided to open a CrossFit gym together. We were quitting our normal jobs and going all in. And I told him about her and we had a speed, a speed school that we were starting in conjunction with the CrossFit. So CrossFit was kind of to help bring the adults in, but I knew how to train athletes. So I wanted to do a speed school. And she was a track athlete, so I wanted her to run the speed school. Yeah. And I had to tell my, at that time, business partner, I was like, hey, I, our first employee, um, yeah, I'm dating her. And it's just like, I know, like, it just sounds, it just sounds <laughs> terrible. But he, you know, looking back, he was super cool about it. And then um, we were engaged. Six months after we met. <clears throat> and then married six, six months, months later. So that's why I'm saying you guys yeah. beat us. Okay, <laughs> right, half a year. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Let's talk about bows. Bows and hoes. Bows and hoes. <laughs> Remember who's the hoe? <laughs> Is that the working Bows thumbnail? That's, 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 that's Josh Jones we're referring to. <laughs> Josh Jones is the hoe. <laughs> so you, we met at uh, TAC. TAC, yeah. Yep. Last and summer. Just introduced, hey, whatever, said what's up, and then mm -hmm. introduced me to you, and then we got to talking, take it from there, yep. how it got to here. Yeah, well, I was asking you questions about, a, you know, a scope because I was having issues. And and then you, I think, asked, like, are you shooting to Audrey? And Audrey's like, no. And I was like, well, honestly, if she starts shooting, she's going to be better than me. And you're like, well, let's make it happen. And you guys, where do you live? Where are you from? Want to come up to Spokane, Washington? Because you were and, with MFJJ when yeah, we were talking yep, to you. Yep. So it just kind of all. And do a bow build and. You know, we're like, oh, that'd be really cool. And we didn't know how was, we were going to make it happen. But right before hunting season, I had messaged you, said, hey, like, she wants to buy a bow. Like, can we make it happen? And you said, yeah, hit me up at, at the start of the year and we'll we'll figure it out. And sure enough, we uh, we made it happen. So we're here. Oh, you did make it happen. Later. <laughs> it was cool. We made it happen. Because we just, like, met you guys at the shop. Mm -hmm. And Jeff's behind the camera right now. But, like, I told Jeff, yeah, we'll shop for a bow for an hour. It's going to take Josh about an hour to build it. And then we'll go shoot the course for an hour. Then we'll come back. We'll work out. And then we'll probably just hang out, eat dinner. We didn't get home till like 7 p.m. Yeah. We went hard. Like, you shopped your ass we off. We showed up at 10 a.m. Yes. And got to your house when? Uh, at 7 p.m. Yeah, 7 or 7.30. 7, 7, yeah, so. But I want to talk, too, because we're going to use this part for the YouTube video. Yeah. The video is probably going to be one or two, maybe three episodes. Yeah. You look in that lens and you tell those MFers that I didn't tell you to buy a Matthews. <laughs> Swear on my life, he did not tell me to buy a Matthews. We shot four different bows and I'm naive here to bow hunting, right? I'm very familiar with like rifle hunting, grew up doing that. Bow hunting's new of all four, hands down. It was Matthews. Like, <laughs> so I'm like, no know? influence. Like, I just picked it. Like, That's did impressive. Did you even know the name brand? Like, did you even know it was a Matthews? I've like? heard of Matthews and Hoyt. I didn't really know. It was PS PSE. PSE. Yep. And then <clears throat> the Eva Shockey. Which is Bowtech. Okay. See, so I didn't. I wasn't too familiar with those. It was I've the cool color Matthews. one. Yeah, I know. I like <laughs> the color. The color almost sold me. Um, yeah, but of the four, it was just like a no-brainer. I don't know, the Matthews, it what sold me. What was interesting was that it, she got it narrowed down to the PSC Mach 30 mm -hmm. carbon bow. Mm -hmm. That's basically two grand for just a bow. Mm -hmm. And then the lift, which was 1300-ish. Mm -hmm. Those are just naked bows. Um, you shoot the Matthews Prima, mm -hmm. and I was I, I thought for sure Josh would like still sell those or bust that out. I don't think, I don't know. He didn't. He yeah. grabbed her the same bow I have mm -hmm. yeah. and the same ATA. 
But what was interesting is that she really liked that the vibe on that carbon yeah. bow. Like it. Yeah, it, out, I almost picked the carbon because yeah. it just felt like it was weird. The Matthews feels a little heavier. Yep. And the carbon bow felt a lot lighter, but he said it was like point what of a pound, yeah. like something tiny. A couple ounces oh. different. Yeah. That's it. But it was something with the length, right, of the bow that made longer, it feel. Yeah, uh -huh. the Matthews has got a longer riser, but it's yeah. cut out. Uh, let's talk about your um, shoulder muscles right now, because you <laughs> really hadn't shot a bow ever. <laughs> no. uh, you were very interested in drawing as much weight as possible. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot, she did I really was. well. Like she probably spent the majority of her day plus 45 pounds, like yeah. pushing at 50, but she shot all those bows head to head over and over and over. And after a while, he'd make her get rid of one. And then she'd have to go shoot them over and over. And oh then he'd make gosh. her get rid of <laughs> one. And then it was down to these two. And then it was like, that's when uh, Dodds was like, all right, MFJJ, you can't talk. She's going to shoot these bows back and forth. <laughs> Three Don't rounds influence each, her. <laughs> and then she's gonna decide. And it was awesome. Yeah. Because she she picked what she liked. That's a yeah. lot of shooting. Even after yeah. ten arrows, my arms are starting to feel it. Yeah. Well, I feel like my draw right now is at a good spot where honestly, I mean, we went and shot the course after. I don't even know how many arrows I shot yesterday. A but lot. honestly, I could I could hang all the way to the end. Like I wasn't struggling to pull it. So maybe I'll go up and wait some I don't know. I don't know how long till you know when you work up and wait but it will i'm not glad take i was long. where i was no. at it'll probably yesterday. be a week or two yeah so yeah that's cool yeah. uh let's talk about your goals with bow hunting mm -hmm. because you have killed yeah um a lot of animals with rifles yeah including a 365 inch bull <laughs> well um, i mean i have some I got some cool uncles, my dad, like I had some men hunting with me, mm -hmm. you know, so it was fun. What do you want to do with bow hunting? Like, I'll give you an example. Alicia loves whitetail hunting, believe yeah. it or not, which is so strange to me, but I get it. Yeah. She likes not being around her kids. Yeah. In a tree stand where there is cell phone service. Yeah. Hunting in a pinch point or even over corn or whatever, and then she's a tr like she's a trophy whitetail hunter. Yeah, she literally yeah. won't shoot anything that's not mature. Yeah, even though yep. I've hunted with her, yep. like shoot, shoot, and she's like, yeah, oh. I, I feel you on that. That was me with my bull. <laughs> uh, my dad, my dad finally had to be like, Audrey, you may not get a trophy bull. That's okay. We're just here to hunt. Stop worrying about the size. I'm like, okay. And then, like, what was it like the day or two before it ended? <laughs> That's a big bowl. Tell me oh, this, Jens. Like, I probably cried a little when she did shoot her first buck with a bow. I was so insanely bleep and oh, proud. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I literally was like more nervous filming her shooting than I've ever been for myself. Yeah. And then. She was pretty nonchalant and walked up and was like, yeah, got a buck. And I was yeah. just like. <laughs> You're like, yeah, babe. You Wasn't that a cool day? Yeah, yeah that That's was so cool. a really memorable day. Oh. Up there. there yeah, it is. he's up there. Heck yeah. Uh, so what was it like for you, Jens, walking up on a 365-inch bull that your wife killed? Oh, my gosh. Like, that's a dream bull. If I even get an opportunity, that would be a once in a lifetime. So seeing her do that and seeing her hunt, like, it was more how hard she hunted through from the beginning to the finish because we were hiking through scrub oak up mountains and we're with three you know grown men that have done this for lots of years and she is coming along didn't complain once just totally about it like hey we have to go to this peak over there and she's like let's let's do it you know and then we got an opportunity on day eight like maybe a day before the the hunt ended and and when she made it happen, like, it was just, you could see, it was just a memory that came all together and, and her being able to have our kids there. And yeah. I mean, so I massive. called him, yeah. I called him right after I killed my bull and he hauls up, but it was close it enough was he could bring I the kids. Even be there. Yeah. I had to go to work. The only day of the whole paid. hunt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And not to mention, you're only six months postpartum, right? Yeah. Oh, see, that, that was the hard part because so hunting eight days in a row 
when you are breastfeeding and we had a tiny six month old, was he six months? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. six month old baby at home plus our other daughter. So that was probably the hardest part of it because it's like, you know, trying to figure out the kids. And But it was, mm -hmm. it was so cool, like so rewarding that they could come hang out and we have a picture of our daughter like touching my elk you know That's it was amazing. so cool like i was sh i mean i was like shaking you know like buck fever is real but <laughs> for some reason like that moment it was just times 20. i don't know you couldn't explain that feeling yeah. just, and we're still excited. eating it today. so no jealousy i mean it's <laughs> we're we're uh <laughs> When it comes to competition, I would say we handle it probably not the best. <laughs> we try to do our best, and but we Audrey's love really to competitive. compete. I'm competitive, yeah. and so is he. But we, I don't know, we like to compete together yeah, in we, a lot of things. It's, it's healthy. healthy. Like, like we, we try, try to, we try to go on adventures, and we like to do sports. It's never serious. Like we never take. Well, it like on. you're saying, it's like you're stoked for each other. Like when she shot mm -hmm. her whitetail, you know, it's just like that feeling when you're so stoked for each other. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's cool, you know. Did the game plan for Audrey is to get her down to Texas with that bow mm -hmm. to get some reps in the red zone? Mm -hmm. That'd be sick. I think it's a lot different. <clears throat> it's so personal. Mm -hmm. You know, how far was the shot on your 365 bull? Gosh, three. It was like 340. Yeah, 340 probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's cut that by 90% yeah. and shoot that thing at 34 yeah. yards. Yeah. It's different. Yeah. I'm not saying one's better than oh, the other. I'm just saying no, it's, it's different. So maybe head to Texas, different. get some, since you've been there before, yeah. which is cool, man. Um, what's your guys' vibe on training with us the last, we've done two workouts yeah. in like 10 hours because we got home late. We ate <laughs> From my wife's bomb elk steak yeah, chili. Yeah, it was so good. I, I wanted another serving. Yeah. But I didn't, I knew we were coming out here to work out. Yeah. So and it was getting late, so we came out, worked out. And then we woke up this morning and worked out again because yeah. we got a schedule. What do you guys think of our nonsense training? Shout out. They did really good. Yeah. You guys Phenomenal. are kind of hate both of you right now. You not only <laughs> look amazing, but Whoa. you move amazing. I mean, I hate you man, guys. I don't know. That was, it was fun. She was pushing me. She was pushing the pace, but I'm hurting. I'm feeling it. <laughs> like my body's going to be sore, but yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you know, coming, coming into, into it, it, we we knew both of you train really hard. So I mean, I was expecting, I was expecting the worst, and I was in for it. I, I wanted to be part of elk shape and get the full experience. And yeah. we definitely, you know, before the workout, you're like, all right, I know you're a competitive competitive dude, and I'm competitive, so let's go. <laughs> let's and go at it. So that just set the tone, <laughs> and sure Shut enough, up. we go out of the out the gate just smoking ourselves and and by the last round of the of the am rap right of of the different movements we did my legs were were toast so <laughs> but it was a uh, it was good i felt good after you always feel good after you work out hard like that and you feel fulfilled and and you guys both of you i mean i wish we could do this every day cuz i yeah. feel like the amount of fitness that i could build just having people like you to hold me accountable would be that's why we said after we were done working out with you, the amount of potential, like Dan and I could both see it <laughs> yeah. for sure. Yeah, you, you, you guys are both in a position to do any fitness pursuit. Absolutely. Whether it be stepping on stage after dieting and figure. <laughs> that's, that's literally the most discipline mm -hmm. out of anything is yeah. to get in your underwear, step on a stage, <laughs> and let a couple strangers subjectively oh, yeah. decide if you're in first place or not. Like, it's mad true. respect. Yeah. Uh, or you got, like, you doing the rim to rim to rim in 16 and change hours. Guys, that's all the way down the bottom of the Grand Canyon, cross it to the north rim, back down and up to the south rim, nonstop, and you did it. And now you've signed up for what? A yeah, so a marathon and then 100K in August. Yeah. And the dude could squat. Um, the biggest thing that when he told me this yesterday, I got to brag on you, was <laughs> what what challenge did you call it? You coined the it? Apex Predator Challenge. And tell everybody what you did. I'm so impressed. Yeah, you got to explain the name of it, too, where you got the name. Well, I just figured, you know, when you're, when you're um, in the mountains and you're hunting, you need to be able to, to run when you need to run. You need to be able to get in front of, you know, a herd or elk, and, and you need to be able to turn it on. And whether that's sprinting or endurance, you got to be able to have the aerobic capacity to get there. So I figured if I could run a, 
a mile under five minutes, then that meant, you know, I'd have decent aerobic capacity to do something like that. And then you got to have strength to be able to pack out when you do get a kill or, you know, hiking up a mountain and pulling and just having the, the strength, the relative strength to, you know, go do something hard like that and be in the mountains. Um, and so my goal was to run a sub five minute mile, bench 315, squat 405 and deadlift 500 in the same day. And I, it just got me excited and I put a program together that I, I put together myself to just help me be disciplined to that goal and it f felt like I was training like an athlete again. You made a program yourself, like you periodized it out, you gave yourself six months and then you tested it. Mm -hmm. um, we could probably spend a whole podcast on that program, yeah. <laughs> but that's pretty cool that you were able to set yourself up. Let me ask you, the, what were your numbers day one? Wouldn't you be interested? Like, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. We where know what did you, you did start? on six months. Yeah, yeah. What were, where were you at on day one? Well, I didn't take any baseline measures because I kind of knew generally where I was at. I had never hit 315 on the bench. Like, that was never a thing. I had done 405 and I had deadlift 500, and I had never ran a sub five minute mile because normally when you're building strength, you're focusing on strength. When you're focusing on speed, you're focusing on speed. When you do those together, it is a case for injury most likely because it's a lot of volume. And so it was a lot of experimenting to make sure that I wasn't exhausting one system over the other and, and compensating. So I had to build the muscle mass first and then build the aerobic capacity to then bring them all together. So. It was it was tricky. I mean, it was an experiment for sure, and and to because I was at risk for injury. But um, so going back to your question, my numbers I had I had ran like a five forty minute mile at probably my peak of training when I was training for you know marathon and more of the endurance side. And then like I said, I'd never I'd maybe hit two ninety five on bench, um, but. I had squatted 405 and deadlift because we did a lot of that in, at Utah State with that. Alicia, ask Audrey some fitness questions that you're just dying to know from her. Because she's like <laughs> just dying to know. pretty amazing like fitness model slash not delicate. Do you All know what around. I mean? <laughs> All around. Not not, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, well, let's start with... What is your background in fitness? Did you play high school sports? Um, I mean, I was on the golf team when I was young and cheerleading, did some gymnastics growing up. So I was always like, you know, athletic, I guess you could say. Looking back, I wish I would have tried something more like track, but I, I just didn't. Um, but anyway, so after high school ended, I didn't continue any of that and just went to college and then it was, it was really when I met Jens, like seeing him play football and the way he was lifting and going to the gym all the time, I'd never really seen that or been around it. And so it was totally new to me. Um, but once I had our first baby, I kind of was just like, you know, I need something. Like I'm more drawn to fitness and physical things. Like I got to figure out something that I like. And at the time I was like, it's not really running. I don't know. So we moved to Fargo, North Dakota while he was working at a hospital out there for a year for some work stuff. And I had just had a baby. So we moved there when our daughter was like four weeks old. So first baby. And so I didn't have anyone all day, every day. Um, he would be gone until about five at night. He'd leave in the morning, be at the hospital all day. So I was alone. Um, so yeah, I found like a local gym and just kind of started there. And the daycare was amazing. Like the girls loved my daughter. She became like their daughter in a way for that whole year. And that's kind of where I started. So I started in the gym. I was just like grinding every day. Just, I started doing progressive overload. That was kind of like my method to build muscle. And I started to see results. So like, how did you know about progressive overload? Did you learn a lot from Jen? Um, yeah, he, I mean, he's super knowledgeable. So he has his background in exercise science. So he graduated with that. He's always loved health and fitness. So he kind of helped teach me about things. Like I was scared of creatine, scared of BCA, scared of, lifting to get bulky, all the typical things, you know? Yeah. But then when I started doing them and listening to him, I'm like, shoot, this works. Yeah. So I started there, 
you know, did a Spartan race for fun. That was, you know, just like that multifunctional training, running, obstacles, half marathon. That was fun. Um, did you feel like you were fit for all of those things? Like, I mean, I kind of tried to train leading up to okay. each of those. I feel like the Spartan was a little, which, which version did we do? It wasn't the sprint. I, th I think it's called a super. Yeah. It's like, like eight or nine K. miles. Yeah. yeah. So we did that one and I was like kind of hitting the gym here and there at that time, but nothing crazy. Mm -hmm. And that one was fine. But the half marathon I had to train like running. My only goal was just not to stop. So, and I didn't, I didn't stop, but you know, I maintained, I was a little bit pregnant at that time. <laughs> How far? Yeah, Women are incredible. Yeah, I'm like, I was a little pregnant with our yeah. second, I don't know, yeah. 10 weeks or something, but. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. So, and now I'm on to bodybuilding, just trying it out. I don't know. Yeah. I needed a well, new goal. Well, you seem to be pretty good at it. I mean, you, <laughs> you're like in a competition to where you could get your pro card, right? Yeah. And so I did my first competition in October a couple months ago. So I ended up taking first in all three of my classes. And honestly, I'd never even seen a show. Cause like I said, I, I was, I've trained in the gym, Spartan races. We were doing some CrossFit too. So I would go to CrossFit classes and that was fun. I did do a CrossFit competition one time too. <laughs> I don't know. I'm all over. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm everywhere. Yeah, well-rounded. Yeah. Like she's down for whatever. Yeah, I'm down for whatever. Out. That's a good point. So yeah, I competed in October, took first, and then basically you have an opportunity to go to nationals if you take it. And I told gents before I did the competition, if I qualified for nationals at this, I was like, there's probably no way. I don't know much about this. I'm going to try just for fun. But if I do, I feel like it's, you got to take it, you know, oh, definitely. you either do it or you turn it down. So I'm like, I may as well do it. So it's in July, end of July. So you're already training like, yeah, it's mainly, like I said, a nutritional. Yeah, discipline. it's mainly nutrition <clears throat> because I, we saw you. You're amazing. You're super fit. <laughs> you have probably great genetics combined with an amazing work, you know, strategic work pace lifestyle where you can push the weights eat the right, get the right rest. Like you have to have it all. Yeah. So you have a future probably. I'm um, warning you. So <laughs> I'm warning um, you. <laughs> it's, co it's cool to know you before you get major famous. Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Basically, <laughs> there's a gal that lives uh, in Western Montana. Her uh -huh. name is Dana mm -hmm. Bailey. Have you heard of her? Dana Lynn Bailey. I mm -hmm. haven't. You've she heard of her? Is she part of FitCon? Uh, I have no, yeah, probably. Short Rob hair. Bailey's yep. her yeah, husband. Yeah. Yep. She's oh, sure she's oh, on oh. everything. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think I've heard of her too. Of not being natural. Yeah. Just because, you know, people like it's to do that. It's just part of the thing. They're over in um, Western Montana. So um, okay. I don't know them personally, but that, that's like the one lady that I know who's just right, rose to the top in yeah. that. Yeah. So there's a cool. lot of potential. Yeah. And you're already doing some modeling and yeah. some other stuff. Mm -hmm. So. Hopefully your career takes off and you can retire and just work out all day. Yeah. <laughs> That's the plan. Bo hunt. Hunt, I wanted to end this with guys and get everybody here at the table to just kind of like, first off, plug anything you need to plug, but also give our listeners just something that you have learned on this journey called life that you feel like would be important for them so that there's some sort of educational component to this or value. Mm -hmm. Start with you, gents. Yeah, so I think for me growing up, I've always been... You know, I, I guess we all have our, our, our things that make us tick, right? Like our weaknesses. And I was always the small guy and I picked football out of all the other sports that to pursue. And you usually need to be pretty big to play football because you're going up against big guys. And, and, you know, I didn't know how I was going to do it, but when I was introduced to the weight room, you know, I saw how that could apply to, on, to my performance on the field. And the amount of time that I put into the, to the weight room and I got stronger, it was a direct correlation to, you know, my performance on the field. And when I, when I saw that, you know, my whole world was like, all right, well, I know, no, I know now what I need to focus on if I want to be good at football. And so when that, when that stirred, when that passion started, you know, in my soul and it just got into every fiber and I could just then take that and, and run and and I was able to take that to the collegiate level and if I could do it it just made me think of how many other people can can have that as well and how much joy and and just passion for life it brought into to my my journey and and so as I 
had learned about fitness and how how much it's helped me i've i've wanted to share that with other people and hope hopefully bring that into other people's lives where you know you take you take advantage of your health and your fitness and you learn not only about your body and how it can grow but you learn about life and you learn about discipline and and you feel good and you want to you gain confidence and you and you gain all these different attributes that then directly correlate to to all sorts of life all all different um, ways of life and and now it's it's transitioned not to football but to hunting bow hunting in the mountains because that's I'm not kidding you know and you know this but elk hunting is elk hunting deer hunting you name it but when you're in the backcountry that is the hardest physical thing that you could be doing because it's it's all encompassing encompassing you I mean you got to have the fitness you got to have the nutrition you got to have the mindset you got to be strategic and have you know problem solving and how to navigate the woods and it's it's do or die a lot of times out there and so that's brought a new new light into my life that I've just grown to love and now that's how I how I direct my training so to me when I can help somebody chase their adventure you know whether that's running their first 5k or going on their first hunt and being confident to go do that like I'm all about it and I want to help people experience that because that's what makes life life and I want to share that with people and so I've I've taken on you know training and and different things for people to dial in their nutrition and their programming to to whatever their goal may be to help them chase their adventure I I want to help them with that and so that's that's kind of what my my passion is right now so and I guess your your next question was how how you can give instructional um like some sort of instructions I mean I just want to part with some a little a little zinger for people to like maybe that can be a mantra for them for the rest of the week or the month of the year you got like just something that you've learned you're 32 years young what's that thing yeah well I think just going back to what I was just was just saying is you know find find something that you can be completely obsessed with and find that passion because because that's where the dreams that's where dreaming and everything come into play and and if you can find that then your other other things you know we have a family I have two kids we have a busy life I have a full-time job and if if I can go out and shoot my bow for 15 minutes and I can dial it in like I am a better person because of it and I'm a better father I'm a better husband and if you can find something like that that just makes you, you know, excited and and gets you up in the morning, then then you're going to be a better person because of it. And so I would say, you know, find that that something, find whatever in your soul makes you tick, and and go after it because it's going to make you a better person. Yeah, I love that. Amen Aud- to that. Yeah, Audrey, what what do you got for the folks? Just like. You know, you're in your late twenties. You're a mother too. You're getting into bow hunting. You've killed big bulls now. Um, what do you got for the audience? Any parting advice or? I just feel like for me, it's like I've always found it's good to be, you know, not be too comfortable with where you're at in life. Like I, f- I feel like sometimes I sound like I do so many different things, but it's because I get comfortable doing certain things. So then I like to be like, you know what? What's something new to get out of my comfort zone? So like getting a bow, you know, this is this is out of my comfort zone, but I'm like super excited for it. Mm-hmm. Or like competitions. I used to tell people I would never do that. I would never compete. Like it's just not my style. And then I was telling Jen, it's like, I just feel comfortable. Like I need something. I'm too comfortable being comfortable right now. So just getting out of your comfort zone and trying new things and just doing hard things in general. I think there's something respectable about doing hard things and achieving them through all the trial and error it takes to get there, you know? Man, you guys are motivating me. Oh, awesome. <laughs> That's good. If you're getting motivated, then they are. But that was well said. Yeah. All right, Alicia, bring it home. What do you got for us? Oh, I I didn't know I was getting, I was getting, I was, I was eating it up, man. <laughs> now I gotta Good, that means you weren't out. thinking about what you were going to say and you were listening. I yeah. like that about you. <laughs> well, I have a lot to learn in these 37 years of life I've lived. I still have a lot to learn. Um, man, I feel like both of those guys said kind of like what I would like really lean into. My snippet for, I don't even know. Why don't you go, Dan? 
and then I'll think about it because I already know what you're going to say. I, no. <laughs> I am not going to say anything. This just is, I'm the host. I don't have to give up my head. <laughs> I don't have to do so anything. So we can end it there. Um, just mad shout out to these guys for coming up here. Absolutely. Um, they flew up. They rented a car. They're hanging out, crashing our place, building bows. We're headed to this, her first ever archery shoot. It's a 3D in the rain in North Idaho. It's going to be awesome. Mom's going to go watch soccer games. And then we're going to hang out tonight and get them on the airplane <laughs> tomorrow. But guys, thank you for watching. Uh, we'll put a link to their Instagrams at the best way to reach out to you guys yeah. if they want to. Yeah. Or follow along their journeys. Remember, separation is in the preparation. We'll catch you on the next one.